Will this be a Prusa killer? Damn. If you'd like the short version of this video, feel free to skip to this timestamp for a summary and comparison of the A1 Mini to other current 3D printers. Am I a little late to this news? Yes. You know, didn't click on any social media to check out the Bamboo Labs launch of their new products today, September 20th. My email kind of spoiled it for me when I got it this morning, but was at work when they launched at 9 a.m. It's currently 12 hours later at 9 p.m., so... Let's check out what they launched today. I have my laptop right here. So if you see me, it's my laptop. If you hear me typing, my laptop. So I'm going to open, I don't know what to do first. Do I open my emails? Cause then I'll know exactly what's new or do I, I think I'll just go to the site. Oh, they made a mini printer. Oh, Bamboo Lab A1 mini printer, a colorful gateway to 3D printing. I'm sure most of you have also watched the video. So I'm gonna hit watch video, my honest reaction. Oh, it's so cute. I'm not gonna lie though, the material dispensing system looks a little weird. I wonder if you're gonna have to bolt it to a table so that it doesn't fall over. No, considering gravity and how if you have one spool at the very top could fall over. Mm. I take that back. I think the stand will be fine thanks to these stabilizing feet, which look similar to those on PC monitors and TV stands, which are also top-heavy pieces of equipment. So it should be fine. Oh nice, it has auto calibration and nozzle probe bed leveling just like the Prusas do. I'm pretty sure even the Mini has like the auto bed leveling, Pro it probably also has that Pinda sensor. Oh cool. See, I, have, I haven't really fully followed like the other bamboo printers, the X1 Carbon, the P1S, etc. I'm not sure if they also have the removable hot end, but it's actually really cool how quick it is to swap out the like whole heater cartridge hot end. It is literally such a pain trying to change it on, you know, this bed slinger or on the ender. So many more steps. Good for lazy people like me. Taking a look at the base, it's very aesthetically pleasing. And I like the display that they have, that it's like full color. Silent motors. Nice, they have linear rails. Alright, so they just did mention something about like material tangling. So they now have this like tangle monitoring system, which... I was just running a print on here with this like cheap white filament and it kept on tangling. Oh gosh, and when the material tangles, like the machine makes the nastiest noises trying to pull the filament loose. So yeah, tangle monitoring sounds awesome. It seems like it sends you like a warning. It says failed to feed the filament to the tool head. Oh, so it pauses the print, which is nice. I've actually never used a bamboo. So I'm just going off of like what my friends who have bamboos have told me that they like about the printer. I find it quite interesting how bamboo filaments themselves have an RFID tag in them that basically has all the material settings on it. So when the printer detects that tag, it basically loads the profile. Oh nice, even, this, even the light version has a purge wiper. All right, that was the end of the video. Watching it print that deer at the end I don't know if it's just the table they're using, the camera angle, or what, but you can kind of see the light AMS unit wobble a little bit. I really hope that the base is weighted so that there's no toppling over of that system. One more thing. Welcome to the maker world. So they have their own 3D platform now. I don't know how you guys feel about 3D printing from an app. Personally, I don't have the best phone. It's really slow, so... The idea of being able to print from an app isn't very useful for me, nor do I necessarily like having my printer connected over the internet. So obviously pros and cons with both those things. Having your printer connected wirelessly lets you send prints over the internet instead of having to load unload SD cards, which can be annoying. And you can also obviously monitor your print progress when you're not at home. Not that it's ideal to be running a printer unsupervised. But yeah, I'm curious how that platform is going to do considering a lot of printer manufacturers tend to launch these kinds of platforms for file sharing. Personally, don't think we need another one, but in terms of bamboo FAQs, etc., maybe it'll be a good place for getting help with 
stainless steel nozzle, so the hot end goes a max of 300 degrees Celsius, and the build plate goes only up to 80 degrees Celsius. In terms of print speed, the max speed of the tool head is 500 millimeters per second, and maximum acceleration is 10,000 millimeters per second squared. So there's a few recommended materials. Support for PLA PET GTPU PVA, those are considered the ideal materials, and then it seems like ABS, ASA, PC, PA, PET, and then any carbon or glass fiber reinforced materials are not recommended, and that's probably just because the nozzle can't get as hot and also you don't have an enclosure on your printer. Oh nice, in terms of sensors, there's a monitor and camera, filament runout sensor, a filament odometer, power loss recovery, as well as a filament tangle sensor. In terms of the sensors though on the machine, I would say it seems like it's going to be more capable than the Mini Prusa. I'm not sure, like I've seen the Mini, I think it's a Mini Creality one going around, but honestly anything from Creality I tend to just generalize it in it's like an ender. I'd imagine, editing Dora will clarify, but I'd imagine that, you know, the Creality version, even the Prusa one, they don't have the filament tangle sensor, nor do they have a monitoring camera or anything for filament odometers. One thing I do like is how they're marketing the AMS light unit, is that it's multicolor 3D printing for everybody. Alright, so cats out of the bag, they launched a mini 3D printer with light material interchanging system. So, what are my thoughts? I think it is a cute little machine that has a lot of features packed in for the price. Do I think $600 is a lot of money for a printer of that build volume? Yes. So right off the bat, a lot of you familiar with the machines would probably compare this directly to the Prusa Mini. So going on their site, the original Prusa Mini comes at most semi-assembled for a price in CAD before any HSD and shipping around $619. So you still need to put a bit of work in outside of the box to set it up. Probably will take you more than 20 minutes. Zooming in. Wait, is the Prusa Mini not direct drive? Hold up. Taking a look at the new A1 Mini. I think they did this on purpose. Market competition. I think you know what I'm going to say now is that the A1 has definitely a lot more features for the price. It comes fully assembled and easy to integrate in 20 minutes, or at least that's what they're justifying in the marketing. It has full auto calibration just like the Prusa does. The main difference here is the material system. So when you buy an A1 Mini for the price of $600 with the combo before shipping and tax, you're getting a system that has up to four materials for change, so you can do color change without having to sit there and wait for your printer to tell you when to pause and switch materials. Currently on my Prusa Mark III, I know obviously larger printer, but I have to sit there and wait until my printer pauses for me to change a color. And it can get super annoying when I'm printing things that have more than two materials. So being able to even have this system load four and just go is awesome. Oh, they've got fun facts. Fun fact, the A1 Mini sings electronic music with no speaker. The A1 Mini can drive the three motors that generate certain vibration frequencies to play up to three soundtracks at the same time. So basically you can play MIDI files on your 3D printer with a web MIDI to G-code generator. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I gotta try that on my other printers. Didn't know a MIDI to G-code generator existed. Stay tuned. There are some other machines and material systems currently on the market. However, the A1 Mini does have some competitive features for the price, including a direct drive extruder, fast print speeds, auto bed leveling, vibration offsetting, easily swappable hot ends, and affordable automated material changing. Other small build volume machines on the market include the Ender 2 Pro, the Prusa Mini, and the Voron Zero. Other multi-material management systems include the Prusa MMU system, the Pallet system by Mosaic Manufacturing, and the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder geared for Voron systems. After further research, I really don't think the Prusa MMU would be a good idea on the Mini considering that it's Bowden and not direct drive. According to the Reddit rabbit hole I fell down, pallet would make more sense. Too bad it's so expensive. I guess the one downside too with the AMS units is that they seem to be directly compatible only with the bamboo machines. However, I read on a forum saying that 
technically you can like hack them to work with other machines, but you kind of need to know what you're doing to get that to work. I'm not sure of the cross compatibility for the Prusa MMU and then the one for the Vorom, but I'm sure it would be easier to integrate than trying to retrofit the AMS. If the A1 Mini performs just as well as the previous Bamboo Labs machines, I can see it being a popular alternative considering the features you get at the cost for both the material management and the printer, especially considering that it comes pre-assembled and takes around 20 minutes to set up. Although the A1 Mini is of smaller build volume, it might all around be better for the users who don't often print large items or batches, and it makes the technology more adoptable for schools, smaller workshops, and hobbyists. Just like there's already a market for the Voron Zero and Prusa Mini. So what do you guys think about this new machine? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.